Okay, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's session. And we're going to be looking at wireframes today and using balsamic to create and produce wireframes. My name is John, and I'm going to be conducting today's session a business analyst and uh, product owner as well. Uh, first of all, I'll talk about what we're going to cover in this session. I'm going to talk, tell you, before we jump straight, rather than jumping straight into it, I wanted to tell you a little bit about wireframes. I give it an introduction into wireframes and discuss the definition of them, what a wireframe is, the purpose of it, and also the importance of wireframes when it comes to um, software development. We'll talk about some key benefits of wireframes and also uh, use cases as well. I uh, will touch briefly on the types of wireframes that we have. So I explained the difference between low fidelity and high fidelity wireframes, static wireframes, interactive wireframes uh, as well. Uh, today we'll be doing static wireframes or static high fidelity wireframe, but we'll talk about what those differences are so that you are aware of that. And then we will be jumping on to um, uh, balsamic and, and, and doing that. If, you're, if you can mute yourself, that will be fantastic. Unless I, unless I can find out who's speaking, I will mute you. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to jump on that. And then if you have any questions um, as well, we'll go and do that at, towards the end. Yeah, okay. So let's talk about, first of all, introduction to wireframe. Some people might be thinking, what is a wireframe? Am I going to become an electrician? Should I go and go and buy some wires? Should I go to Ikea and pick up a frame? No, a wireframe, if we remember when we was doing the gathering requirements, we said that one of the elicitation techniques was prototyping and prototyping would be um, creating wireframes. And what wireframes are, they are visual representations of user interfaces that act as blueprints for software applications or websites, okay? And we'll look at what they are as well. We'll, we'll look at some examples of those. But what they do, it provides a clear uh, and simple outline of the layout, a clear and simple outline of the structure, and also any elements of that user interface. So you can look at it like a sketch or a diagram or a draft of a user face, whether it be a mobile application or a web application. And that is what a wireframe is, yeah? So what is the purpose of wireframe? Why are we doing this? What's the reason why we use wireframes as BAs when we're, um, uh, we're, 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 we're working, yeah? One of the first things is that wireframes help in the early stage of design and planning. It's going to help you to communicate between your stakeholders, communicate between your designers, your QAs, your um, uh, developers, everyone else in between, everyone else in your team. You will be able to communicate clearly what it is that you are trying to convey and what you want to do. And it will also facilitate your usability testing and leaves room for uh, feedback as well. Yeah. So there's some characteristics of, of wireframes, some key characteristics of wireframe and wireframes are, they have minimalistic designs. It doesn't have, you know, distracting visuals or animations. There's not color or any like detailed graphics. The, the main purpose of wireframes focuses on layouts and structure. You have text or placeholder text to indicate content but uh, sometimes it will, there will not be any actual content, especially if it's a low fidelity wireframe, which we'll look at, yeah? The wireframe also will help you to clarify your requirements. It will help you to define any uh, user requirements or expectations, and it will make sure that your stakeholder's vision is in alignment 
with what it is that you're producing at the end. Remember the first session when we talked about the robot and the dolly? If you had a wireframe, it would have helped. It would have helped that you would have had that robot upside down with one leg sticking out here and a head upside down smiling with one ankle. You would have been able to demonstrate or show an example and clarify the requirement, which will obviously reduce misunderstandings. Okay. And it will provide a, um, a clear roadmap for designers, provides a clear roadmap for developers. It allows you to save time. Um, it allows you to save resources by identifying any potential design flaws or any sort of usability flaws early. Okay. Um, wireframes as well, what they do, they allow your stakeholders to visualize the, the final product. And it, will and it will enable early feedback so that everyone is, is on the same page. So that's what the purpose of wireframes are and uh, what wireframes are. But I want to talk to you a little bit about the types of wireframes. What kind of types of wireframes do we have? So the first type that we have is uh, low fidelity wireframes. So what are low fidelity wireframes? Low fidelity wireframes are just rough sketches or basic representations of a user interface. Okay, it's commonly hand-drawn or it's created using like, um, you know, simple tools. And all, these, all they do is they focus on showing you or conveying to your stakeholders the overall structure or the overall layout without any sort of detailed design elements. Just like a sketch, just like a draft. Just give me an example of what it might look like. Just a low fidelity wireframe, nothing too detailed. So that's the first type. The second type is opposite of low, um, high fidelity wireframe. So what are high fidelity wireframes? If low is just, you know, a basic rough sketch, high fidelity are more detailed and visually refined. They can include some specific design elements such as instructions or colors or typography and any graphical assets. Yeah, they provide like a close up representation of the final, uh, the final look or the final feel. So let's have a look at some, an example of uh, low fidelity and high fidelity wireframe. So you can see on here, on a low fidelity wireframe, there's not any detailed text here. We're just having a sketch of, you know, what it might look like. You know, we can see overall the layout of the structure. We have four sections here, four check boxes, some sort of text. We're not sure what it might be. Some sort of text at the bottom, some text here. There's some sort of icon here that's not really sure what it is, but the high fidelity wireframe, you can see it's a little bit more detailed. You can, you know, you can see it says invite users, send invites or skip this step. So this will show your development team or your designers exactly what to do. Okay, so low fidelity, high fidelity wireframe. This is the difference between the two. What is the next type of uh, wireframe, we have static wireframes. So static wireframes are non-interactive wireframes and they give you a fixed view of the user interface. They are useful for demonstrating the layout. So the ones we just saw just now, they're static, it shows you the layout, it shows you the structure uh, and it gives you uh, the content organization. So you, how we saw those check boxes and how we saw that bit at the top and how there was not those four of them is just static. And it shows us this is what it looks like. And again, this type of wireframe is often used in um, early stages of design and also for documentation purposes when you're putting together your uh, PBI, your PBIs or user stories will include wireframes in there. So we've talked about low fidelity, high fidelity, static, and the other type of wireframe is interactive wireframe, okay? So an interactive wireframe 
will allow users to simulate the interactions and experience the interface. So imagine what we've just saw before. Uh, let me see if I can go back to that one. What we saw, saw before on a static, static wireframe, I just go on here and I can see it on an interactive wireframe. If I click on here or click on here or click on send invites, it actually uh, simulates the action, the journey of what exactly is happening. Okay, so the interactive wireframe it allows you to simulate those interactions and experience the interface. You don't have the final product, but I can experience what it's actually doing. And this is very valuable when it comes to usability testing and gathering feedback, or if you want to validate um, the functionality of that product. Okay, so they provide a more dynamic representation and it showcases the user flow and the transition. So a tool that we'll use for um, that we'll use for that you use for that won't be won't be Balsamic, but you can use a, a different tool called Figma. And I hope that yeah, at one point we'll we'll probably do that towards the end. We'll we'll, we'll look at doing some interactive wireframes after we've looked at static ones. I think it'll be good for us to at least you know look at that as well. But Figma is a different tool which um, can be used for interactive wireframes, okay? So um, without wasting time, this is a hands-on where I wanna show you Balsamic. I want to show you how Balsamic is used so that you can become familiar with it once you jump on it yourself. So we're going to go into using Balsamic, okay? um let me just pull up a different screen so that we can jump on balsamic and the first thing i'm going to show you is an example of a wireframe and then a, and an, and an example of the final product and then we will jump on uh balsamic as well. So let me share my screen again. Share my screen. Bear with me. Uh, okay. Um, anyone just confirm you can see my screen? Just whether in the chat or I don't want to mute. Do confirm, do confirm. Oh, I don't think it's sharing. Can anyone see my screen? Uh, let me see yeah, we can see it. You can see it, you can see it, right? Okay, cool. So, on here, you can see this is an example of a wireframe. The wireframe is giving you a sketch of this particular website. And on here, you can see there's a logo, the home about us, find a mentor, the contact us. There's like a get started button that was put here. And you can see here you have static text and you also have rotating text underneath. And um, it says here, connecting you with professionals to help you with your, and it has CV reviews and this rotating text. If you look at the user story that is associated with this, it has some clear instructions as to what needs to be developed for this, okay? So if you remember when we looked at the, the user stories, we have the role, role, goal, benefit. So the role being as a role, I want, goal so that the benefit so and then you've got your given when and then which we spoke about as well so given that you're on this when i see this then this should happen something should happen here this is rotating text but this as you can see is a guideline is a is a draft of something that was put together before it was developed so that it could be developed okay 
it has dimensions of what you know the picture the dimension the size of the image what it should be and it makes it clear for the development team or the design team to know what exactly is needed so they're not going to put the logo you know towards the middle or towards the right it's going to be laid out as per the wireframe which is given the artistic direction for the development team and the design team. So this is what is the wireframe, and this is what the finished product was. Let me split it in two, actually, so we can look at them side by side. Uh, hold on. There we go. Let's try it this way. This may or may not work. Bear with me. Let me try this. There we go. Okay. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to um, zoom out so we can perhaps see it side by side. So you can see the purpose and benefit of this. All right, the wireframe on the left, the product on the right. Static text, rotating text. Start as a mentee, join as a mentor. Okay. The uh, button at the top, this is what was uh, the, the requirement that was gathered, and this was the result of that, okay? Um, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna open uh, up our summit, and we are going to explore how that particular, um, wireframe was made bear with my moment while i log in so everyone will be given access to balsamic by the way after this session um, i try to get it done before so we can do it side by side but the recording will be available and um we'll be able to um yeah we'll be able to we're able to do it that way Okay, let me share my screen again now that I have it open. Okay. Cool. So when we are logged into Balsamic, this is the, the interface. This is the page that we're on. And to simply start your wireframe, you want to click on this, um, this section here. I don't know if I can oh, bear with me. Hold on, this is not right. Okay, yeah. You want to click on this section here. Um, I hope you can see my mouse. The plus new wireframe, and that's where you're going to almost like you're starting a new project. So these might be some old projects or so uh, on here, but you want to start a new project. Okay, so I'm starting a new project. Let's create a new one here. Okay, so we're just going to call this U25 test. Yeah. So now this is here. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to start off with a container. So you can see at the top here, you've got icons, images. Um, You've got a whole load of different um, things you can add on here. You've got forms. You could just go to all and search here. You can literally got them, you know, loads of different icons or tools that you could use. And you want to start off with a container. That's the first thing you want to start off with. Okay. So you can either start off with a browser window. You can see here, I just drag it on. And it's given me this browser window. So I can put on here uh, U25 test. This is the name of the website. And we're going to call this website U25 test test.com. And what that does, once I press enter, you can see it's brought up the, the window. And I can just, you know, arrange it how I want and put it here like so. Now, what I do as well, anytime I've 
added in a layer, the first thing I will do is lock it so that it doesn't move. So for example, I could want to add in a button. Let's say I wanted to add in a button. Uh, for example, here. It's a get started button, right? So I've just added in the button here. Now, I, if I select this like so, if I lock this uh, right click and lock the browser window, now the browser window is locked. And I can select this and I can move it around and it's not going to move my entire, my entire project if I select it all. It's only going to move what's unlocked. Once I've then put, put the button where I want it, I can then lock the button as well. Now the button's not going to, it's not going to move. If I have any other tools or resources or icons on here, if I select them, only the ones that are unlocked are um, going to move. If I then unlock it, if I keep it unlocked, if I unlock this button, as you can see, I can select something and end up moving more than I want. So I just lock, lock something once I've done, once I'm done with it. Okay. Once I know this is what I want, if I don't want to use it, I'll just unlock it. It's not something you have to do. I'm just giving you uh, some examples of good practice for what I do. Okay, so let's go back to uh, what we had before. Let me move this here. And let's start off, let's recreate what we just done before. Okay, so we're going to recreate what we just, what, we, what I just showed you, which was this on here move it across to the screen we're going to recreate this so i'm going to show you how we recreate this so the first thing i'm doing here we're going to add is the menu right so the menu uh if you look at the top you can find it another shortcut you can do as well right up here on the right hand side where it says quick add. just put your mouse there and type menu look what comes up menu bar and you can see this menu bar has come up. I can put this menu bar here and it's told, and I can just literally double click, I go in and I edit. So it was home, there was about us, there was find a mentor, and there was contact us, right? If I want to add another page, let's say I want to add an FAQ page, I can do that as well. And I can put it like so. Okay, so on the one that I showed you before, there was no box around here. And to, obviously once you've gone on here, you, there's, there's ways you can add other, you can edit these tools. So you can make it, you know, make these box thicker or space them out. And the way you can see the different options that you have is by clicking on this uh, arrow here where I'm hovering to say, that says show inspector. Okay. And you can see on the show inspector, you can, it's got different options you can have here. So I can make it bold, italics, I can change the text size if I want to. And that border that we had here, that we don't necessarily want, because there's no border on here, we just untick show border. Once we untick that, as you can see, I just go back to here. Uh, close this uh, inspection uh, inspection panel, and I and I move it here, and I can move it where I see fit, and then I can lock it in place. Right click, lock menu bar. Now that menu bar is locked. What's the next thing that we need to add? The next thing was the button, get started button. So let's go ahead and make that get started button. So the button is here, there's buttons here. We can go in and just go up here and type button. But you can go on here, you can see there's even different types of buttons you want to use. But let me just type button on here. I'll just be you and you can see it all comes up. And you've got even all these different terms. Sometimes it's good to look through these as well and become familiar with certain terms that you might not know and you might not know. So for example, radio button. This is a radio button. Or you can have um, uh, you have different one. You can have 
what else can you have? You can have a combo box. Combo box where you have somewhere where you can, like, what's like a drop down? So a drop down. And then the drop down, if I can, I can have option one or option uh, two, option three, and then it shows here. Let's get rid of this spare line. This combo box here is now showing. So I could have some. So being familiar with this combo box is not a KFC combo meal. That kind of combo box is a different kind of combo box. And that's what we use here. So let me type in button. Yeah. Put button here. And it's made the button. I'm going to drag it across. Like so, you've got these grid lines as well that make sure it's aligned. And I can just double click and simply write, get started. Cool. Yeah, get started. Now the get started button is here. Again, I can go into this. Maybe I want this bold. Maybe I want this font to be a little bit bigger, maybe, or maybe even the same, who knows? Keep it the same, and I can um, maybe if I want to change the background color, if I wanted to, maybe I wanted to make a point, you know, that this is the button that we need. So, for example, I was doing a wireframe and it was about this button. I could not necessarily have to, but it could slightly change the color, but I'd keep it all grayscale. Uh, keep it all grayscale. And you can see now this get started button is now here. Now, because I've locked the menu, when I select this, I only I'm able to grab this. OK, but if I want to, once I've done with both of these, I could even lock. Uh, I could hold down uh, control if I wanted to. I'm holding down control for both the menu and this and I'm grouping them together. So now this is one, one item, this is one, uh, one item, Until I, unless I ungroup it, this button and menu is now together. And then I can lock this if I want to, right? I can then unlock it if I want to and move it around where I see fit. Maybe you want to have the menu uh, on, in a different place. Menus don't necessarily have to be on here. On the environment that we're working on for our project, the menu is not on the top right. The menu is on the far left. Okay. So rather than having a menu like this, the menu is here, but it's home, about underneath, services underneath, contact underneath, and then other information. So the, the menu is on the left hand side. So if I was doing that, that would be done a little bit differently. So but I keep this here and I'm just going to lock this here for now. Um, the next thing we have, let's see if we can add like some, uh, the rectangle. Okay, so let me go to the rectangle. So again, just shapes and you could just search for rectangle. There you go, rectangles come up. Okay, so this was for that middle section that we wanted that has that text. So we could just put it here like this. It's going to grid lock into place. But you can see this is all white. So I don't want to change the background color of this because the one that we had before, move my across my screen, you can see it's gray hair. Okay, it's gray hair. So I'm just going to go on here. I'm going to open up uh, my inspector and I'm going to find all the different things I can change on it here. So the, what you want to change here is the color. And you want to make it a slightly darker color. So maybe this gray hair will do. Uh, maybe make it a little bit lighter. Perfect. Okay, close this and I'm going to lock this. Definitely going to lock this because I'm not going to start dragging in this other text. Okay. So if I was doing low fidelity, that we spoke about, you can just add in some, you know, remember we had this text here, just add in a, you know, a text box, or you can even have some um, dummy text as well. 
uh, just adding some dummy text or just something like this. Um, and it had some button. We had some, they had two buttons as well. Underneath, we just put the buttons. So what I can do is put this here. So I could right click and, uh, no, sorry, I can hold it down. And if I hold down, uh, see what button it is. Yep, hold down Alt. So if I hold down the Alt button, I'm going to duplicate. Once it's selected, if I hold down Alt and drag, it's going to duplicate. And I've got gridlock. So remember, the first one was start as a mentee. And the other one was join as a mentor. OK, so those are my two buttons. Remember, this rectangle is locked now. So if I did this, I know it's going to be down here. OK, and that's why I lock it. Um, and this is just even low fidelity. You wouldn't even have this in here. Just put a button. It's giving you just giving you a, a draft of what it might look like. Yeah, for low fidelity, I wouldn't even uh, do this. OK, but we'll add this one back in, start as a mentee, cool. OK, so we had on here, uh, two, I'm going to do low fidelity for this section, just so you can see, as you can see, it's just text, normal text, and uh, it doesn't have much on here, but it allows us to see just have an idea of what it is exactly we're trying to create in terms of the layout of this uh, um, product, okay? But we're gonna put the, what we actually want to have on here. So I'm gonna go to um, text and we can add a text area, text box, or even go on here and just type text. Uh, so not test, text. Um, we have text regular, we can put text area, maybe. And we can just write here what we had. It was connecting you with professionals to help you with your, that was the static text. So you can see already on here, there's some things I need to change with this area. So I'm going to go to this inspector. And you can see the, what is here that we need to change? We need to get rid of this uh, opacity. So opacity is going to change. It's, not, it's going to make it uh, remove the opacity of the, the background, which you can see. And we also want to get rid of the border. We don't want a border actually. We do not want a border. Um, let's see where we're gonna change this. Let's move this out of the way. We're going to change the size of this. We can make it bold. Um, and the border color, I don't want it to show. So it was this gray that we had before. Um, that's just changing the color of that border to make it the same as this background, which we had before. And, and I can change the size of the text as I see fit, okay? So we have this here. And then obviously remember we had <clears throat> the static text, which was here, and then we had the rotating text underneath. So the rotating text, again, I can add another one here and put CV reviews and uh, inspector on the left, on the right, sorry, at the top here. And let me just make this a little bit smaller. Uh, and with this one, we actually wanted to, um, no, sorry, we're not going to keep this one, actually. We're going to put, 
do, 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 do. this one instead. We're going to put this one instead. Or what I said before, we press Alt and copy. Easier. This will save you time. There you go. See the reviews. Alt and copy. And I keep this like this. But maybe for this one, what I'll do is that the border, no, the color of this. Let me see what's changing here. No. The border color, I might make, just have it like this, for example. Because this is going to be a little bit different. Yeah. So this is now given me almost like a, a wireframe or a prototype of what that particular part of the site has used. And I've shown you the quick add, the different features, but this is something which you want to explore yourself. You want to go through this and see, see all the buttons, see the different ways you can um, add in diff uh, different icons that you might want to include, like social media icons or footers. This is where you add it on. But for this, you add this like this. What I'll then add is an arrow because I want to just point out what's static and what's rotating. So I can simply come on here with arrow. As it's dragged the arrow like this, you've got these points where you can adjust the shape of it. And let me just adjust this so that this is pointing like so. Obviously, I've got two. Uh, arrow ends on here. The way I'm going to make any changes to this right here on the inspector. Click on here and you can see on your options right here, it's telling you your left arrow or your right arrow. Obviously both of them are on right now. If I take this one off, you can see what's happened. Perfect. I can then take this, press Alt to duplicate it because I want to have another one for here. And I can just bring this down uh i could bring this down and i can now rename these or put some text uh by these let's go to text go to text uh text input let's put that why not and this can be static text Okay, static text and rotating text. Again, I just press Alt and I change this to rotating. You can see a little tip like holding down Alt. Does it, it might seem like something small, but it is saving me a significant amount of time when doing this just by pressing Alt and just by having that. Uh, uh, that that shortcut to do that, it's now made it a little bit easier. And then we had on here like an image section. So I can put image. So this is a an icon that represent re represents having an image of some sort. And I'll put the image here, like so. And on this image, I can, if I wanted to, put in uh, some dimensions. Let me just put. Uh, you can either just take this, if I wanted to put them here, and we're going to say we want this image to be 600 pixels by 600 pixels. Example. Well, this is not 600 by 600, but yeah, we can put that in here. Again, if you want to adjust the size, we open inspector and we adjust accordingly. Okay. So, there's not necessarily any right or wrong way to do this, as long as it's clear and it's understandable. And if by doing this, you can um, relay your, um, uh, you're communicating with your, between your stakeholders and everyone else in between, that's what, um, that's what makes this work. So imagine before the development, this would be created like, like I showed you before, and that would then be shown and used for your developers 
so that they would then create the final uh, product which uh, they want. Um, and I'll just show you again here. There we go. This, this would be something that would be produced out of that wireframe. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's completely finished, but it's a start, okay? So this particular one, for example, the image is aligned too far to the right. It needs to come into the center. So, and the dimensions of it might change. This is 600 by 600, so it might change. So we might go back to this user story and make those changes, but it all starts with this. It all starts with uh, the wireframe, okay? And you will have the wireframes for different uh, sections of different websites or different, you know, different, different pages that you have as well, whether it be the landing page or it could be um, a footer or a testimonial section. If I go to here, <clears throat> you can see there's a footer on here. It's the same sort of thing. And when you're doing this, you can, you're literally using the same tools which you have before, the same menu, but now I've got my rectangle and I'm adding in this icon here. You can see I've got social media icons here. I want to remove this uh, Twitter, I, uh, Twitter icon. I could add in, add it in again, Twitter, or I could even put YouTube. Just type in YouTube, there you go. YouTubers um, turn up, I then click. The icon is here. You can see it's not the right size to adjust it. I'm going to go to here and it's giving me the size on here. Extra small, small, medium. So these are all extra small. I can put it here. I can align it. Um, another thing with this, if you're throwing in logos like this, for example, let me just put this in. Let's just say you put in logos like this and you want to space them out evenly. What you're doing? I'm trying to select this, but I'm trying to highlight all of these, but because this rectangle is not locked, it's not letting me, you can see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lock this rectangle. Now I'll be able to select these, like so. And then I'm going to come here to this section, one of the um, inspector, and you want to go to the, and you want to go to this one here, which, um, not this one, sorry, you want to distribute them, Distribute them uh, evenly, okay? So uh, I believe it's no, not this one. No, definitely not that one. Mm, it is this one here. Which one is it? This one here. Okay, so if you hold across them, we'll show you. Yeah, you're distributing them. So as you can see now, they're distributed evenly, okay? So again, this is just exploring through this. You'll find all these tools once you go on here. And this is just adding in the text, adding in the email icon, this email icon to find it. Just search for email, see what pops up. There you go, envelopes regular. That's what that is. If you wanted to use any of these, you can use them. Doesn't necessarily mean they will use this exact one but it just gives them a guideline, gives your development team a guideline so that when they are producing their footer, as you can see, the bottom of the footer, you've got some sort of guide of how it's looking, okay? Right, so it's showing you how it's, it's, it's supposed to look, but the wireframe is what was created first the wireframe was the benchmark for all of that to be completed okay so i'm going to keep bow summit open and i'm going to also open the floor for any questions i did want to time box this for one hour so by 10 o'clock i wanted to round up on this so if there's any questions from anyone in the meeting or any feedback, suggestions, or comments. If you think this is a waste of time, if you think Balsamic is just a heap of trash, if it's too confusing for you, if you think, you know what, I get it, 
If you've got any questions about what Barsali can or cannot do, um, this is your opportunity to speak or forever hold your peace. Go ahead. Yeah, I've got a few questions. Go ahead. Who's speaking? Um, so B. B, okay, go ahead, B. Um, yeah, so what application is this that you're using to make? Is it using as like VAs to like come up with solutions or like why would we need to use it? So you will use Balsamic to uh, to create the wireframes. And yeah, so okay. you're creating the wireframes for the product. So if you remember, right, what we've discussed here, look, the what it is, is a visual representation mm -hmm. of the user interface. This is what we use. It's a blueprint for okay. that software application. So what we've just done now is the blueprint for that website. Okay. And it's giving you the outline of that layout and it's giving you the structure and the elements of that. And that is what the BA puts together. It's the BA's responsibility to put together the wireframe. Yeah. Okay. And would that be after we gather requirements or would it be before? Like when would exactly would we need to use, like make a wireframe? Good, very, very, very good question. Um, I'm going to show you. Okay. Um, bear with me. Let me show you something. Let me see if I can show you something. So when exactly you will use this? Yeah. Let me show you. Let me see if I can quickly log in to something on another screen. So you use this as part of your user story. So remember, we've done a session on gathering requirements. We've yeah. done a session on writing the effective user stories and acceptance criteria. It is, it is when you've done that, that you will then um, use this uh, on the Azure board. Right. Mm -hmm. Has everyone got access to Azure yet? I don't think I do. I did message the admin, admin on the group chat, but I haven't still been added to it, so I don't okay. have that. Okay. Speak to your um, Scrum Master Maureen. It's the Scrum Master, I believe. Um, I want to show you. Let's see how I'm going to do this. Bear with me. I've got something up on another screen. I want to pull it up and show you once I find it. But I just want to show you exactly where you would uh, use this. And that's a, that's a, that was a very um, good question. Okay, cool. Got it up here. Perfect. Cool. There we go. So you can see here um, this was a user story written about that particular landing page banner, right? Okay, so the, the landing page must be this, it should have this, it should have this, the rotating text, and as you can see, the wireframe is in the user story. It's part of the user story. This is the user story and it's part of it. So we insert this in the user story on Azure. We haven't got to this yet, but this is we'll, we'll get to that. But on, on the Azure board, we will we'll insert this into that. And how you do that simply when you once you get your um your wireframe like so, like this, um, and it's ready and you finish with it, you just go to edit, copy bitmap to clipboard, and then you go to the page where you are and you just paste yeah you just paste it in like so copy control paste and you see it just you just pasted it in there okay i'm not going to save or close this but yeah that's how you'd use it okay so you create on balsamic once you're done with it edit copy bitmap to clipboard and then you can that's going to copy it and then you control v paste it in the pbi in the user story to support what you've written about that. So remember that that user story will have some clear instructions that you will write. Your, your role, goal, benefit. As a I want, so that. 
and you're given when and then. Okay, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does, thank you. Awesome, anyone else? Thank you, B. Anyone else? Doesn't have to be a question, could be feedback, comments, suggestions. And another thing I want to say, everyone should have access to Balsamic. If you don't have access to that, please let your Scrum Master know and they can yep. make a, a request on your behalf so that you can have access to Balsamic. So all the BAs, you have access to Balsamic okay, um, cool. so that you can do this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Um, I'll help you to chase that up as well. I, I was really pushing for it to be done for today, but... Um... I think there was some sort of confusion with the balsamic and whether it was Visio. I'm not sure, but yeah, we'll get to that. But yeah, you need to do with this. You're not going to learn about balsamic by watching, by attending here and then um, going up and being a wizard at it within 24 hours. You need to get on it yourself. You need to spend, you need to have a hands on time with balsamic. I've spent a lot. I've not been on balsamic for five minutes or 10 or one hour. I think if I collect the hours that I've spent on balsamic together and add it, that's why I'm familiar with some, some shortcuts or I can quickly put together a wireframe because I'm familiar with the tool and how it's used, okay? So get familiar with it. Go on here, just, you know, just go on there, create a new wireframe and just try it. If you, you know, if you was gathering a requirement, you know the project we're working on. If you was to put it together, I would say, to, if I was you, I'd say, you know what, if I were to put together a mobile application, if I go to containers, let me go to phone, add it in, how would I want, how would I want this to, how would I want this to look, like, right? what's the first thing that, you know, what, once the person's on here, let me lock it in, when I go in here, what's the first thing that I want to see? Do I want people to log in somehow? Should there be a login button or a, an email field? How, how, how do I want it to look? Should I have an email um, or tech or email field or combo box? What is it that I want to look at? Maybe you should look at other applications for some inspiration. You know, um, you can put select uh, region, for example. You know, we're working in London, we're working in Kent, we're working in the Midlands. I don't know. Example. Look at this and you're just exploring. This is just off the top of my head, but it's, it's just showing that you can, um, yeah, you can add in anything. See, see what you think, you know, works with this and see what, solutions you can provide by just exploring through this you know maybe they've got to enter some sort of text or whatever it may be this is where wireframes come in okay whether it's low fidelity high fidelity static or interactive they're all different types of wireframes that you can use so go on balsamic once you get the uh, access onto it uh Create a new wireframe, click on the plus sign, go to containers, five containers first, add something, add in a phone, a, a browser window, try and duplicate something. Okay, so go to any site, go to Amazon, go to Argos, and just try and duplicate or copy what you're seeing on Balsamic by yourself. The way the menu's there, the way the button's there, as you're doing it, you're gonna come, you're gonna become familiar with certain terminologies when you see stuff like an on off switch or you can you know look at um uh, other tools that you might have like a checkbox or a date chooser maybe you want to have a you know or whatever it is number stepper playback feature whatever it may be that you, you have whatever site you're going on spotify or any sort of app itunes recreate your itunes screen when you're listening to uh, the video unavailable, recreate the screen, see something as in recreate what you see. Low fidelity and high fidelity. Rather than just dancing for no reason, shaking your hips like a tambourine, wait, make a wireframe. Yeah? 
Any questions before you continue talking? No. Well, in the absence of any other question, um, thank you for attending. I hope this has been insightful and I hope I've been able to add a little bit of value. This session has been recorded, you can watch it back once or twice, maybe three times, so you're familiar. And at any point, if you have any questions today, tomorrow, or the day after, please message me at any time. Oh, we've got a hand up, I believe. Oh, that's so funny, you can go ahead. Or was that an old Yes, I just, I just want to bring out a suggestion. Can yeah. the video be, be uploaded on a drive so that the link can just be given to us so that we can have access to it at any point in time? Yes, it will be it will be put on YouTube. I have okay. to have, I'm going to have a word with them about, because I know it's been slow and I do apologize about that. Um, and it's actually, it's not actually good practice the way I've been sending it, but the only reason why I've done it is because um, I've not had the links on YouTube and I've been told that we'll have them up. So I was promised that I'll have them up yesterday. This did not materialize. But I'm going to push, as soon as this meeting ends, I'm going to call who I need to call and I'm going to say to them, what is happening? I need these links up ASAP. So all the links will be up. Everything will be up. And um, anytime we have any future sessions, the links will be up within 24 hours the following day. Yeah. I'll make sure that right. that happens. So yeah, it will all be uploaded. And uh, apologies for, for the delay with that. Yeah. Okay, I think that will be the last question and the, that will be all for tonight. Again, thank you all for attending. And I hope this has been insightful, valuable. Take it away, use it, jump on by Sunday once you get it. Go for it if you don't need any further assistance. And yeah, please do that anytime. Let me know if you need any support, help, guidance, advice. That is what I am here for. Okay, let me stop recording.